Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, uh, we are going to be creating some three-dimensional typography from scratch in Illustrator. This is part one of two parts. The second part is coming next week and we will be using just Photoshop next week. So we're gonna take what we, we create this week in Illustrator, which you can see right in front of me. This is the final outcome this week that we're gonna have. And then we're gonna bring it into Photoshop next week and the outcome next week is gonna look like this. So definitely return next week so you can see how we finish everything off in Photoshop. So that's just a little preview of what's to come. So back into Illustrator, this is where we're gonna create and we're just gonna jump right in. I'm gonna give you the color palette that I'm using, uh, like I always do. So I wanna give you the color builds if you wanna use the same palette that I'm using. I'm just gonna come over here and just pause the video if you wanna use them. The color builds are right here for CMYK. So here's kind of the more salmon color. We've got a gold and then we've got this kind of off-white color. Okay. So we're gonna be using a serif typeface for this one just because I really like um, all the character that you get with inside the serifs with this particular style. So I'm gonna be using Adobe Kazlan Pro as my font choice and it comes standard, I believe, on all Macs. Um, I didn't put it on this Mac, it was already there, so I'm assuming it's on all of them. If you're on a PC and you don't have Adobe Kazlan Pro, definitely feel free go to fontsquirrel.com and you can pick up some free serif typefaces very very easily um, so just scan through their serif typefaces and i know you'll find one that'll work fine so i'm just going to put in a capital t for tuesday and this is adobe Kazan pro and i'm just going to scale it up no big deal actually i'm going to grab these colors and bring them over here so we can create ours separately and I'm just when I scale it up I'm holding shift to scale and that keeps it proportional and that looks pretty good and now we need to create a shape out of it we don't need it to be live type anymore because we're just using one initial so I'm gonna go type create outlines and now it's a shape so we cannot edit it anymore okay so now that we have our T, the base color for this is gonna be gold. So I'm just gonna hit I on my keyboard, I drop her that gold, hit V to return back to the shape. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the size of this just slightly. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to, let's do the inside part first. So what we need to do is copy this and we're gonna cut out the insides and then I'll show you how to add a little depth to that. So we're gonna come up here and we're just gonna go object, path, offset path. And make sure you tick this little preview box right here so we can see what's gonna happen. And whenever you offset a path, you are taking the outline of the shape, so the path of the shape, and you're either pushing it outward or you're bringing it inward. In this case, we wanna bring it inward, but the preview is pushing it outward. And this is a, a fun way to kind of add your own strokes or customizations to a pre-existing font or any shape for that matter. So this is pushing it out and we wanna push it in. So all I have to do is put a little negative sign in front of it and now it, it brings it in. And that's actually looking pretty good. Let's see if we do just slightly more what that looks like. That looks good, let's go with that. So I'm gonna hit okay, and now we just have these shapes selected, and I'm gonna color these, I'm just gonna hit I on my keyboard and color that kind of salmon color. And then I'm gonna group them all together. So I hit V on my keyboard to return back to the shapes, and then I'm gonna hit Command G or Control G on a PC, and that groups it together. And now we need to add a little depth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt, I'm gonna click, as I'm dragging, I'm gonna hold Shift to keep it straight, and then release. And then I'm gonna um, actually come in a little closer. So what I need is I need a little strip of, oops, I need a little strip of shadow coming right down here. So the way that I'm going to do it, let me ungroup this, Command Shift G or Control Shift G. Sometimes it links them together when you create um, an offset path. So you just ungroup and then you're good. Okay, so I'm gonna hold Alt, which will make a copy, and then I'm just gonna hit my right arrow key on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna release. And now I'm gonna hit my right keyboard a couple more times, and that looks good. And then I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna come over to my Pathfinder tool over here, my Pathfinder palette, and if you don't see it, you can get to, go, get to it by going Window Pathfinder, and it'll show up. And then I'm gonna hit this little divide icon right here, just click it once. 
And then you have to ungroup these because whenever you use the Pathfinder, it groups everything together. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift G if you're on a Mac or Control Shift G if you're on a PC. And now I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna rubber band select these shapes because I don't need those ones, I just need the ones that are coming from the left. So I'm gonna select these and then select these and delete. And actually I don't need this little hairline down here. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab rubber band select all of these, Command G or Control G on a PC to group them. And then I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard and I'm gonna eyedropper this darker red color. Then I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard and then I, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag it back and I'm gonna hold shift as I'm dragging to keep it straight. And it, it should just snap right in there where it's supposed to go. And you can zoom in to make sure and that looks good. Okay, we're getting going. Now it's, it's already starting to come to life, which is pretty exciting. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a chunky letter and then afterwards we're gonna add the shadow to it. So we're almost done already. That's pretty easy, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take this gold shape right here. I just selected it and now I need to make a copy of it and I'm gonna hit Command C or Control C on a PC and then Command F or Control F on a PC to paste it in front. You have to deselect first and then paste it in front. Okay. Next, we need to create another one and bring it down and then we're gonna blend them together. I do wanna mention that it is very tempting to use the 3D Extrude and Bevel tool, right? Whoops, that's not what I wanna do. Effects, 3D Extrude and Bevel. So this is Illustrator's 3D tool and you can kind of move things around and it looks really awesome and fun when you get into it. The problem with this is it defaults to this off axis as soon as you use it and it's kind of a pain in the butt to get everything to align correctly when you use it. Um, and you've got all these toggles, which is great. You've got a lot of control, but I feel like you have more control with the blend tool, which is why I want to show the blend tool. And I'm kind of a control freak when it comes to the details, especially with topography. And I feel like I have less control with the 3D extrude and bevel. So that's why I'm going to teach using the blend tool. This is totally an option. You can change your depth. You can change different bevels you have on it. Some of these can come out kind of cheesy though, so just be careful. Um, and then this, you know, it's kind of hard because sometimes you can nudge things just so, and then you've got to remember what you hit if you made any type of mistake, and that can get really frustrating fast. So that's my reason for not doing that. So instead, we're gonna do this. Okay, so I'm gonna hold Alt, I'm gonna click, and then I'm just gonna drag this down a little bit to make my chunky type. So the important thing to remember is whenever you, whenever you use the blend tool, you have to blend from, if you wanna do a smooth blend, which is what we're gonna do, you have to blend from a different color to a different color. If you blend from the same color, let me show you what happens. I'm just gonna click and click, you get one one little piece in between, and that's not a smooth blend at all because I got little bumps right here. So I'll show you the workaround for that. I'm not sure why they do that, but it's pretty annoying. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on this one that I just made. I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard, and I'm just gonna make it this color. And now I'm gonna come over here. If you wanna double click on your blend tool, just make sure it says smooth color, and then you'll be all set. So I'm just gonna click on one color, and then I'm gonna click on the other color. And now you see we've got a really nice looking smooth blend right here but we need it to be one color instead of two. So here's the workaround with this. You're gonna come up here and go Object, Expand, and then hit OK. And now this expands it into every little itty bitty um, copy that was slightly moved, so it created that smooth blend. And then you're gonna come over to your Pathfinder and you're just gonna unite them. So this will end up creating that blend into one shape, and now it's one color. And now I'm just gonna send it to the back the keyboard shortcut for that is command shift open bracket or you can just right click arrange send it back okay so now we've got some chunky type which is really nice all right so the next and last thing we need to do let me bring in a background color let me just set this here send it to the back and i'm just going to lock it if you ever need to lock something in place it's just command or control two the number two on your keyboard and now i can't click it if you need to un lock it, it's command alt two, the number two, or control alt number two, and that'll unlock it. I'm gonna lock it. Okay, so whenever you're using shadows, light 
obviously bends and it's gonna go over things and under things and everywhere. And the shapes and the shadows that it create are slightly warped or skewed from the original. So it's not a perfect mathematical shadow. Um, so that's why I'm gonna show you my kind of workaround to make it believable, but um, less work than having to redraw your own custom shadows in there. So this is how I do it. I'm gonna click on my gold shape I'm gonna hit Command-C or Control-C on a PC to copy, release, Command-F or Control-F on a PC to paste on top, and then I'm gonna nudge this, I'm gonna hold Alt, make a copy, and then I'm just gonna slowly, um, slightly move it over to the right this time to create that kind of um, shadow going the opposite direction because our light source is somewhere over here. So our light's gonna hit here and then project a shadow in this direction. Okay, so now I need to blend these two together, but just like I mentioned before, we can't blend two of the same colors together. So I'm just gonna change this color. It doesn't matter what you change it to. And then I'm gonna blend it. So I'm gonna click on this one and click on this one. And then we come back over here, object expand, break it into all the little pieces, and then you're gonna unite them together using your pathfinder. And then give it a second and it'll work out. And then I'm gonna eyedropper this darker red, and then I'm gonna send it to the back and then forward once because this one was um, in the back as well. Okay, so that doesn't look right, obviously. So this is kind of my workaround. I'm just gonna bring this down here and I'm gonna look over here where these corners kind of touch. So this is still off from what it was, but it does make more of a believable shadow that way. And since this is kind of dark, we're gonna just add a slight transparency to it. We're gonna make it multiply and then just change it to 50%. You can even go lower if you want, let's go 40. Okay, so if you zoom out, it's looking pretty good far away. So this is what you're gonna need to bring into part two of next week. So definitely play around with different color schemes if you'd like. So this is the base of our three-dimensional typography from scratch, just using the blend tool. We're not cheating with the 3D extrude and bevel, although you can totally do that if you want. I'm not gonna discourage it. I'm just saying like, if you're like me and you like to tinker and make sure every little detail is controlled, blend tool is the way to go. Okay, all that said, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe so you don't miss next week's tutorial. And don't forget to go check out my blog, every-tuesday.com, for a bunch of other design tutorials and design freebies. I release a new design tutorial every single week, so make sure you subscribe, and I will see you next week.